two polar graphs. Some of you might be familiar with polar graphs. Some of you might, this, this might be new, but it's a different way to plot points. And so what we're gonna use is we're gonna use the radius or the radial distance and an angle measurement in order to get us to that point. And so for instance, if we look at A, that tells me that I'm going to go to pi over six. So that's the value that I wanna to go to. And so I'm gonna whip around the circle to pi over six, and then I'm gonna go out a radial distance of three. So if I plot that point on the graph, that means that I'm going to go to pi over six, and then I'm gonna go out a distance three, and we can count out three there. So that is your point A. So it's just a new way to plot points. You might wanna pause this and try some of these, or you can keep on following along. So B means to go to pi. So I'm gonna go all the way over here to pi, and then I'm gonna go out four, one, two, three, four. That would be my B measurement there. C tells you to go to negative five pi over six. So I'm gonna to go to negative five pi over six, and I'm gonna go out three from there, one, two, three. Then the last one for D, I'm going to go to 3 pi over 2, and then the negative 2 might give us a little problem. Let's see what happens. So we go to 3 pi over 2. So normally, I would count out 1 and 2, and I would be right here. However, in this case, what happens is that we have a negative 2. So this point right in the middle is called the pole. So from the pole, I'm going to go actually negative 2 on this three pi over two. So this is three pi over two here. Everything in this direction is going to be positive. Anything back this way would be negative. So then therefore, this would be my point for D. So in quite simple terms, this just means go to three pi over two and then go the other way two units. So the opposite direction of three pi over two because of the negative there. So you should be able to plot points quite easily, hopefully. So one of the differences between rectangular points and polar points is that there's a lot of different ways you can get to a single point in polar, but there's only probably one way that you try to get to something in rectangular. So let's see how this works. So if I have this situation, one, negative one, and then square root of three, which would be somewhere here. If I look at that angle measurement, we know that that's 2 pi over 3. So we put theta second, and we put r first. Well, r is the radius. What's the length of that piece? Well, I do know that, let me write this better. This is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And what I'm going to end up with is a negative 1 here, and then a square root of 3 here. Then if I go ahead and find this, this piece right here, this would be a two. So if I want my r to be positive and theta to be positive, this is gonna be two comma two pi over three. So that's my r and my theta. So that was getting there by this positive angle measurement that I drew out there. Now, what if I tell you that I want r to be positive and theta to be negative? Well, that just means that I have to whip around the circle in a different way. So I'm going to have to get here. And so I'm going to come around this way, which is negative 4 pi over 3. Might want to pause this and try some of the other ones, C and D, for yourself. See if you can whip around. Now for C, if R is less than 0 and theta is greater than 0, that means that I need a positive theta. And then all of a sudden, I'm going to have to zip across the other way in order to get an R that is negative. So I believe that that picture is going to give me my angle measurement that I do want, which I think is pi over 5 pi over 3. And then my radius would have to be negative. So it's going to go in the opposite direction, which would be negative 2. So that's going to flip me over and get me back over to here. And then the last one is with both of them negative. With both of them negative, I'm going to have to still get to this piece right here. So that's going to be a negative pi over 3. 
which has me coming down this way, and then I zip over by going to negative two. And so that would be my last point. So those are all different ways to get to the same exact point that's in rectangular form, but now we have all the polar forms for each one of these. So now we wanna convert back and forth from one to the other. So we know some different things. So for instance, we did this before. If we take the square root of x squared plus y squared, that's gonna give me r. So r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. The tangent of theta is simply the y over the x. As long as we're going through the origin with any kind of line, if we go through the origin here, this point is going to set us up with this proportion because it's just like the sine over the cosine, but then the proportion will take care of itself too so that we bring it down to a radius of one. So that's the tangent. So we can use inverse tangent of y over x in order to find out what angle measurement we're dealing with. To get x and y, I use my cosine formulas in order to get me there. We know that the cosine of theta is equal to x over r. So if I solve for x, that's going to be r cosine of theta. And if I solve for y in this one, it's going to be r sine of theta. So if I say change this point to rectangular form, I have r theta and I wanna convert it over to xy. In order to do that, I'm going to use these two formulas here. So x is equal to my r, which is two cosine of my theta. And then y is equal to two sine of my theta. And if I wanna simplify these, which I do, x would be equal to two times, two times negative one for this would be give, give me negative two and then y would be my zero from this one. So I get negative two, zero. That's the point that corresponds with this. That kind of makes sense. If I go to pi, go out two units, I'm gonna be at negative two, zero. The other way you can do it is just to plot the point like I just said. So I can go ahead pi and then plot the point here, which would be two. And I look at that and I can get negative two zero as well. So two ways to do it, x equals r cosine theta, r, uh, y equals two, I'm sorry, r sine of theta, or you can go ahead and just plot the point. So now in example number four, I wanna change negative three, three, which is in rectangular form to polar form. So I got it written right here. So the first method, you can just draw a picture. That would actually be what I, I called the second method before. But if I plot this one, I'd get a point right here, negative three, three, and that would be down at a 45 degree angle there. And so I know that this would be going, this angle measurement here would be three pi over four. And then how far out do I go? Well, that's going to be the square root of three squared plus three squared. I ignore the negative because I'm squaring it out. And then so that would be the square root of eight, three squared of two. That's your R. And I use this one right here, X squared plus Y squared is equal to R squared in order to figure out that radius. So that would be three squared of two, three pi over four. That would get me to that point, which is really just finding the hypotenuse of this to this point right here, negative three, three. Now, the other way to do it would be to use some straight formulas, which is similar to what we just did, because if you use, find the hypotenuse, that's all you're doing right here. So you can find that radius by what we did there, three square root of two, and then how do we find this three pi over four? Well, that's where the tangent comes into play. I'm kind of running out of room here, so I'll go back up to the top, but I can go tangent of my y over x, so that would be three over negative three, would give me the angle measurement that I do want. I might have to adjust a little bit because positive and negatives in which quadrant I'm in, look at the picture. But this would tell me that, I'm sorry, this is arctan. Arctan of negative one, we know that that would give me pi over four. And it's gonna be negative pi over four because I do have that negative. So negative pi over four is down there. I want this quadrant right here. So I'm gonna to have to add 
pi to it in order to get there. And so that gets me my 3 pi over 4. So you can either do it by kind of plotting the points and looking, or else you can use the arctan to find that angle measurement as well. If it's a not so nice angle measurement, then the arctan on your calculator would work. So if I want to take these equation conversions, go from rectangular to polar, here I see a y. Well, if I see a y, I know I got my equation down here. So I just replace that with the polar form. And then most of these we want to solve for r or r squared. And so I'm going to divide both sides by sine of theta. So I'm going to get r is equal to 4 over the sine of theta. Or else you could call that 4, four key, cosecant of theta if you wish. Number 6, do a similar thing. Replace the x and the y with their respective r cosine theta. And the other one would be the r sine of theta plus 2 equals 0. Factor out and move things around. So now I kind of got r by itself a little bit. I got to divide both sides, and I moved the 2 over. So if I divide by 3 cosine of theta minus sine of theta, then I should have it. So that would be my conversion. So I wrote it more full down here. Now the last example, I wrote, ran out of room, but I'll rewrite it at the bottom. What do you see? For number seven, do you see this right here? X squared plus Y squared. So we want to convert this over. So this would become R squared minus two R cosine theta is equal to zero. And we said that we wanted to try to solve for R. So let's go R, R minus two cosine theta equals zero. And so we end up with r is equal to 0 or r is equal to 2 cosine theta. We're going to ignore this because that's just going to give us a dot at r equal to 0. And then we're just going to use this one right here, which would be r is equal to 2 cosine theta. And that's all we will need. Polar turns into a few more tricks. So you got to try to sometimes work these things out. But if I, uh, the trick for this one is just to square both sides. This would be for number eight. We're going to go ahead and square both sides. So I'm going to get R squared is equal to four. So that's a little trick there. And so now I got X squared plus Y squared is equal to four. If you notice, this is a circle with radius R. No, I'm sorry, radius two. And there's a circle with radius two. And it doesn't matter if R equal to two or r equal to negative 2, it's going to be where you start and finish. And, may, and as long as you have enough domain, they're going to be exactly the same thing. Huh, cool. Let's see if we can get r squared on number 9. If I do that, I'm going to go ahead and go r squared is equal to 3r cosine theta. Oh, that's nice. So now I see this. And so in other words, I, I, I didn't square both sides. I multiplied both sides by r. So then I got r squared, x squared plus y squared is equal to what's r cosine theta, the same thing as 3x. And then I can get all that on one side if I want, or I can leave it as such. Uh, this one, a lot of times you can try to put it into your more normal trig functions. So this would be 2 over the sine of theta. Look at this. R sine of theta, multiply both sides by that, and I get 2. What is R sine theta the same thing as? And so if we want a horizontal line, it's going to be in this form right here, y equal to 2. I'm going to go through these sketching polar graphs very quickly because this video is getting quite long, but uh, use your Desmos. If you go to the wrench and you look in the middle, there is a little polar graph that you can click on and that will get you to where you need to be. And then you can just plug in the equation as we've been doing in polar form. On a TI Inspire, not so bad. You just go to the graph page, then go to, and you do this in docs. I'm not sure you can do it on the other side. Then you go to menu, 
and then graph entry and then number five go ahead and do polar and it will show up with your r equal to and you should be able to set up domain and figure that out okay so let's um, go through these quickly try to graph these they say graph the bold ones on your calculator and replicate them and then i'll also set up the t-charts in order to plot these points and i'll talk about it maybe a little bit and then move on from there so the first one you graph on your calculator you're going to get a circle and it's a circle to the right uh, just a fun fact if you do uh, negative two in front that's going to give you a circle to the left now if we look at b if i want to set these up and plot these i'm going to pick some points and you kind of do it in reverse you pick some thetas and then from theta you go ahead and calculate some r's so from here i'm going to pick zero pi over two and pi and see what happens well if i pl plot those points if i plug in zero into here i'm going to get a zero if i plug in pi over two sine of pi over two is one so i'm going to get a five plug in pi i'm going to get a zero and so if i plot these points zero zero is that point there and then five pi over two so that means go to pi over two and go up five units so that's five units there and then i'm going to go back to zero when i get to pi and i didn't plot other points in there but this is going to be a circle that goes up and so if you notice cosine lefts and rights sine is going to be ups and downs that's it. And so you can find your circles that way. And that would be two, two, three, four, and five. Rose petals are simply that. If it's an even number, you're going to see double the amount of petals. If you see an odd number, you're going to see that many petals because this one will rotate over itself a couple times. Please play around with Desmos and you can even watch this unveil. But this one goes around like this. That would be 0 to pi. And then if I did it again, it would just whip around again. So from 0 to 2 pi, it just overlaps itself. That's why you only see three petals. Then for when it's even, they're not going to overlap each other. So you're going to see twice as many petals. Interesting fact there. I know I'm off here a little bit, but this would be pi over 6. And I went out four. So if I plotted all these points, this is what I would get. And if I go to pi over three, I'm back at zero right here at the pole. Okay. And then at pi over two, I'm going to get, oh, this is negative four. Okay. So those plotting points. Go through and see if you can kind of walk yourself around that. Another name for, name for limousons could be cartoids because they look like hearts. And so the first one says use your calculator. So if I do B, it says go to angle zero, go out three. So I'm going to plot that point. Pi over two, it says go up to six. Pi, go to three. And then three pi over two, go to zero. And so this is how this one's going to set up. This one does not have a loop inside. This one did have a loop inside. So it's going to come hit here, hit here. So one thing to point out for B is that you're going to end up with a sharp point right there. And I don't think that's differentiable. Well, that might come up later. Then for C, here's some points. Notice that this is sine again. That's up and down. This one's cosine left and right. So what do you think this one's going to do? Well, hopefully it's going to be left and right. So I plot zero, zero. Then I go to pi over two and plot two. And I go to pi and plot four. So that has to come out further. And then I go to three pi over two and I'm back at two. So then this one looks like something like this. Okay. Some of them have loops inside, some of them don't. For our purposes, we, we don't worry about these uh, graphs too much, but you do need to be exposed to them. It's nice to know. For the AP, they usually will give you the graph, but uh, I think it's kind of good to go through this again after you've gone through it in pre-calc. Last one is the lemma skate. You're going to have to go on your calculator and do this. 
and that will go ahead and graph it for you. Try that. There's a little bit of summary for the graphs then. Then moving into some of the calculus finally. So number 15, find an equation of the tangent line to the graph. R is equal to two times the quantity. Let's make it two minus two sine of theta at the point two zero. So this should be R theta. If you know anything about these graphs yet though, this turns out that this would be the same exact thing in polar as it is in rectangular. So this would be my xy point as well. Unique in this case, that doesn't always happen. So to find the tangent line, what do we need? We need the derivative. Which derivative? We need dy dx. In order to get dy dx, I'm going to have to go dy over d theta all over dx over d theta. That's what I got to go ahead and find. So I'm going to go ahead and find dy d theta and dx d theta. Uh, and before I do that, I have to rewrite this. These are the transfer over. I can set this up with x is equal to r cosine theta. I've been given r, so all I do is replace that. So x is equal to 2 minus 2 sine of theta. That's my r times the cosine of theta. That's how I rewrite this. And then if I do the same thing for y, so y is equal to r sine of theta, y is equal to 2 minus 2 sine of theta cosine of theta. So I rewrote x and y a little bit. dx dt then is going to be 2 and negative 2 sine of theta. And then here I got a product rule. So it's going to be my negative 2 sine of theta times negative sine of theta. And then I get, um, then my cosine is going to stay the same. And I'll take the derivative of the sine, which would be cosine, cosine. OK, so that's my dy dx. I think I should be able to clean this up a little bit to negative 2 sine of theta plus 2 sine squared theta, and then I have minus 2 cosine squared theta. Since the sine squared and cosine are two different signs, I, plus and minuses, I can't put them together. I made an error here with these. But if I go ahead and take the derivative, this would be 2 cosine theta. I'm, I'm mess, messing this up. This should be sine theta. There it is. OK, so then it's. Uh, Derivative of 2 sine theta is just going to give me 2 cosine theta. And then this would be negative 2 sine squared. So I got to bring the 2 out in front. So this would be minus 4. Leave the sine alone and chain off with the cosine. So that would be using my chain rule. And I wrote it up here for that piece if you want. And so now I can go ahead and put this one here. So I'm going to get 2 cosine theta minus 4 sine of sine times cosine theta. This would be my, my dy d theta. And then down below would be my dx d theta. And then you put it all together, and you're going to get dy dx. And what am I going to evaluate this at? Well, the original problem says the point 2, 0. And remember, these coordinates are in r theta. Don't mix it up, theta r. So if I plug in 0 for theta, I'm simply going to get negative 1. So now I have my slope, and all I need is a point. So my point is 0, 2. Turned out that way, if we said from polar or for parametric, not parametric, but uh, rectangular. And so then this would just be y minus 2 is equal to negative 1 x minus 0. So there's my tangent line equation that I did want. A lot of work, but that's what we need to do. So a couple key points. Make sure you do the x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine of theta. Take this r and plug it in. That's huge. You got to be able to do that. And then also dy d theta over dx d theta, which is equal to dy over dx in terms of theta. 
then we can evaluate. Uh, number 16 sets up very similar to the previous problem because you need to find the x d theta and d y d theta in order to find horizontal tangents. And then also, I believe your notes might say vertical tangents too. Okay, this one does not. Uh, it's a lot of work, and so we can do both. Horizontal tangents would be where the dy d theta would be zero because that would give us dy dx being zero. Okay, so I got dy d theta. And then I want to maybe go ahead and change this with one minus cosine squared theta. So everything gets flipped over to cosine. Okay, so now we're doing horizontal tangents. Now, a lot of times I would go ahead and find the x d theta. And maybe I should, but I'm not going to just for the sake of the time. But when I'm doing horizontal tangents, it's just the numerator. When is the numerator of dy dx? equal to zero, and that comes from dy d theta. So all I wanna know is when this thing's equal to zero, so I'm gonna go ahead and factor this, and then go ahead and find theta. Whew, there's a lot of work, but if I went and factored this, I get this factor gives me this, and so I'm gonna end up with two pi over three and four pi over three. This factor is going to give me theta equal to one. I'm sorry, theta equal to zero. Notice what happens when theta equals zero though. And the question does ask, find the points at where we have a horizontal tangent. Well, we're not going to have a horizontal tangent at zero. So sometimes you have to use observation with the polar to see what's going on. So make sure you do look at the polar graph if possible. And then theta is equal to 2 pi over 3. So I'm going to have a couple points. I need the radius at 2 pi over 3 from my original. So plugging in 2 pi over 3 into here, so plugging 2 pi over 3 into here would end up giving me a 3. And then also doing it for 4 pi over 3, I'm going to end up with a 3 as well. So those are the two points that we do end up with a horizontal tangent. Now, where are we on this graph? Well, my graph isn't quite right here because it comes up a little bit more. But I'm going to be out here. And then I'm also going to be down here. Those are the two places where I'm going to get a horizontal tangent. If we had a vertical tangent, we would have also had this and this and this. But remember, nothing at that zero at the pole because it's a sharp point. The last problem, I hope this is the last problem here. The last problem is finding the equations of the line's tangent. Please hang with me. <laughs> this is really important because this helps you with the integration that we'll do to find areas later. So for these problems, all you have to do is let r equal to zero, and that will tell you the tangent lines at the poles. So I look at the graph here, and it looks like I got a few of them. I'm gonna have one about here, I'm gonna have one of them about here, and I'm gonna have one of them probably here three of them. So let's see what this does. So if I let r equal to zero, let me write zero is equal to four sine of three theta. Divide by four, so sine of three theta is equal to zero. So three theta is going to be equal to those values that I do have where the sine is zero. Well, that's going to be at zero. That's going to be at pi. That's going to be at two pi and that's going to be at 3 pi. Maybe I need that many, maybe I don't. So if I divide all those by 3, I'm going to get 0 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, and I'm also going to get pi. And those are all equations of lines through the origin. So if I have theta equal to 0, that's going to be the same thing as theta equal to pi, so I can ignore that. So if I plot these, I'm going to get theta equal to 0. That's going to be this line right there. That does look like it created a tangent with the curve. Then if I go theta is equal to pi over 3, that's going to be up here, pi over 3. So that's a line. And then 2 pi over 3 looks like, well, my drawing's not too bad. That's going to be 2 pi over 3. And those would be my three lines 
that would give me the tangency at the pole. The pole, remember, again, is similar to what we have called the origin otherwise, okay? And so this is very important because later on we're going to integrate, which means that we're going to get sectors starting from one of these tangent lines to the other tangent line, and we can go ahead and find the area. All right, this is long. I'm, yeah, it is what it is. Thanks for bearing with me. You're awesome. Super. Uh, get into this. This is a long assignment too, and so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, ask your teacher if we split it into two parts. Probably not, though. All right, take care. Bye-bye.